Hello everybody, it's me. Today I'm doing something I've never done before. It's a review of a movie about a band that I think is quite underrated. I'm talking about the godfathers of Scandinavian pop. Aha! The biggest selling Norwegian band ever. And they have a movie out. It's out on DVD and Blu-ray. I'm still an old school kind of guy, so I have it on DVD. Um, but I don't think it's out anywhere else yet, but in Germany and Norway. I'm not so sure, but um, but I've read on Amazon that I think it's going to come out anywhere else um, on uh, May 10. But I'm not so sure whether that will happen that way. Um, but I'm giving you my thoughts on that um, and on the band in general. Um, it's a movie about uh, their career. Uh, and it talks about their highs and lows, the ups and downs, and uh, the good times and struggles. And it all started in Oslo, Norway, um, when uh, guitarist Paul Wachter Savoy and keyboard player Magne Furuholmen uh, met. Uh, when they were kids and they played music together, and uh, then later on they would form a band, a four-piece band called The Bridges. And um, one day they played a gig in a school and um, that school was attended by a young singer called Martin Arkett and uh, he was completely struck uh, by their music and he thought I should be a part of this band and uh, later on uh, Paul and Max saw um, a gig of Martin Arkett's band called Soldier Blue and they thought he should be a part of our band because they were completely struck by his voice and his stage uh, presence uh, but they realized early on that Norway wasn't really the right, the right place for them anymore because um, they thought to really make an impact in music, they should move to London. They moved to London and um, they got influenced by the London club scene. And what was interesting to me when I uh, watched that movie was that they, all three of them came from a totally different direction musically. Oh, they listened to Uriah Heep, to Jimi Hendrix and Queen. And then obviously they uh, pretty much did the same, the, the exact opposite, you know, right? You know, they uh, became a synthy pop act uh, pretty much. Uh, and they worked on some demos and one demo in particular um, stood out. Um, it was a song called Lesson One and it had a, a very catchy synthesizer riff. And um, that synthesizer riff uh, was the foundation of a song called Take On Me. And uh, they uh, tried to get a record uh, deal and one record company called Warner Brothers um, gave them a shot and um, they got into the studio and um, they produced Take On Me. And um, it was a hit in Norway at first but uh, the video wasn't great and uh, they thought ah, it's a good song, but uh, the, the produced version isn't, we, we can't do it better. Uh, and um, then obviously as a young band, you don't have the power to tell your record company, get, can we get a little bit more money to produce another version of a song that's been already made? And uh, but for some reason they had the opportunity to get back into the studio and do another version of Take On Me and that's the version everybody knows. Who doesn't know that song? I mean if you think about 80s music, you know, Take On Me has got to be in the top 10. You know? And um, obviously they did the video and it's one of the most iconic videos ever. I mean if it's got a gazillion views on YouTube, I think everybody knows that video. So it's so iconic. And um, I think the, the video um, uh, helped a lot to get the song to uh, at number one. Uh, in America, um, which um, no other Norwegian act uh, has ever achieved um, before and since then. And, uh, but I think I've always said this, that the song is strong enough um, because it's timeless and um, the song is strong enough uh, to stand for itself. And uh, if you listen to Blinding Lights by The Weeknd, for instance, you, know, you can hear the influence. Yeah. And uh, then they got back into the studio to record um, the album Hunting High and Low. And it's got great songs on there. You know, the Sun Always Shines on TV, the title track, one of the most beautiful ballads of the 80s, in my opinion. Um, and even the deep cuts, Living a Boy's Adventure Tale is great. So great songs. 
um, they got back into the studio to record the second album, Scoundrel Days, Cry Wolf um, and Manhattan Skyline, completely di different style compared to the first album. It's definitely not Take On Me Part 2. They had the opportunity to do a soundtrack for a James Bond movie called The Living Daylights. Then they followed up with Stay On These Roads, the album and the single, and got a little bit more commercial again, you know, with Touchy and You Are The One. And um, then they followed up with East of the Sun, West of the Moon with a wonderful cover version, Crying in the Rain by the Everly Brothers. And then they played a gig um, for Rock and Rio um, in 91, um, the biggest gig of their career in front of nearly 200,000 people. And then the struggle began. Um, because uh, they recorded another album, Memorial Beach, that came out in 93. And um, Magne Frohorman felt that um, he didn't get the credit he deserved um, because he was writing songs or writing bits for songs and uh, he never got the credit for it. And uh, yeah, he was pretty sick and tired of the band and uh, he wanted to do something else. And then obviously uh, they um, uh, did their own uh, different, uh, did their own individual projects. And then in 2000, they came back uh, with the album Minor Earth, Major Sky. And uh, then finally, the critics acknowledged their talents. Uh, and then over the years, uh, bands like Coldplay and Oasis uh, cited them as an influence. You know, Lifelines came out and Analog, um, which was a big hit for them in the UK, um, got them big in the UK again with the title track, got top, I think it reached top five in the UK. And then in 2009, they uh, released the album Foot of the Mountain and the title track, the lead single actually became the highest charting single here in Germany since Take On Me, it reached number three, was a big radio hit for them. And then they decided to announce a farewell tour and that they would split up in 2010. Whether that was a good decision, I don't know. It's it's debatable because I'm, to be honest, I'm not really a big fan of farewell tours. I think it's a cash grab, yeah. You know, because whenever a band announces we're going to split up, everybody's like, oh my goodness, I have to see my favorite band again before they're splitting up. And I just think if you're a musician and if you're really passionate about it, then um, I don't think it's possible to say I'm not going to do this ever again from one day to the other. Um, and uh, so I don't see the point in this because how many times do we have to listen to those bands saying that's it we're never going to tour again it's the last hurrah the final curtain call and then they come back five years later yeah <laughs> because and that's what AHA did basically you know um, they reunited for uh, 2000 for the 2015 release uh, Cast in Steel and that was actually the first time I saw them live in concert I saw Martin Harkett live, um, Martin Harkett solo a live in concert two, year, two years prior to that. And um, don't get me wrong, it was a decent show, but it felt like they were three solo artists on one stage rather than one unit. You know, it seemed, it felt like they uh, don't communicate as much anymore as they used to. You know? So like I said, it was a good show, but I wasn't like, holy crap, that was the best thing I've ever seen. Um, and actually, they said in the they say in the movie that um, Aha was never based on friendship, and they're still touring. They are on tour um, in South America at the moment, and uh, that's the irony because they they're huge in South America, but in North America for any reason, uh, more or less they were seen as one hit wonders, you know, and uh, which is a shame because I have the twenty five compilation album. And um, if you're from the US, you know, you should check it out. You know, they have so many other great songs. You know, Take On Me isn't uh, the only great song. Um, even there's some deep cuts on it. You know, check it out, Slender Frame, um, The Swing of Things. You know, so many great songs, so I can recommend it. And um, I, can re I can recommend this movie too. Um, it's a great story. You know? it's, a, it's an interesting story. And um, yeah, if you are a half fan, um, I think it's a no-brainer. 
So that was my movie review of AHA the movie. If you like this video then leave me a comment in the comment section below and um, it's still a new thing for me to be in front of a camera and to say all those things in English you know because I'm from Germany. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.